It's been a crazy few months in the tech world. Nvidia first announced their GeForce GDX 1080 at the beginning of May at a press day in Austin, Texas. Ten days later, the embargo was lifted and reviewers such as myself could release our results. A further ten days down the track, the 1080 became publicly available on May 27th and sold out shortly after. The initial release, however, was for the Founders Edition, which is essentially a grossly overpriced reference card. The partner board models would have come at a later date, though the exact date hasn't been made clear. Historically, AMD and Nvidia's partners do a much better job of building a graphics card around the GPU, and we expect things to be no different this time, despite Nvidia's bold claims that the Founders Edition will be the best 1080 to hit the market. I'm pretty sure board partner Gigabyte might have something to say about that, and well, in a way they have, by responding with the GeForce GTX 1080 G1 Gaming graphics card, and we'll take a look at this beauty today. So first, what makes the 1080 G1 Gaming so special? Well, gone is the dreaded blower style cooler, and replacing it is Gigabyte's WinForce 3X cooler with blade design fans. The larger heatsink has been complemented with three copper heat pipes featuring a direct touch design which means the copper pipes come in direct contact with the GPU's surface. These aren't just any old heat pipes either. Gigabyte says they're composite heat pipes that combine both thermal conductivity and phase transition, which improves heat transfer between two solid interfaces, improving the cooling capacity by 29%. The heatsink uses the tried and true Gigabyte Triangle Cool technology, which combines the fins with an aluminium clip module, which further enhances heat dissipation. Giving the G1 gaming cooler a bit of bling is, yep, you guessed it, RGB lighting. Whether you think it needs it or not, gamers can enjoy 16.8 million customizable colour lighting which can be adjusted using the Extreme Engine utility, which I'll check out shortly. Sadly, with the G1 Gaming, no major changes have been made to the PCB, so we're still limited to a single 8-pin PCI Express power connector. The G1 Gaming is Gigabyte's mainstream GTX 1080 offering. Their more extreme version will be known as the Extreme Gaming model and it will feature dual 8-pin PCIe connectors and a redesigned PCB. The G1 Gaming is the card that we can expect to hit that $600 MSRP at some point, while the Extreme Gaming will likely be priced closer to the Founders Edition's $700 MSRP. Still, while the G1 Gaming isn't Gigabyte's most extreme offering, it is far from sedate, and despite the same power input configuration, the PCB has been reworked and upgraded. Gone is the 5 plus 1 phase power design of the Founders Edition, we now have an 8 plus 2 phase power design for better load balancing which will improve stability and lower temperatures, particularly when overclocked. Included in the packaging are the highest grade chokes and capacitors, which is all part of Gigabyte's ultra durable materials. On the back side of the G1 Gaming, you'll find a full length backplate protecting the card and the sleek design also looks very cool, giving a clean look. Another important performance characteristic are the factory overclocked core and memory clock speeds. Gigabyte provides two operating modes which are called Gaming Mode and OC Mode. The NVIDIA reference speed calls for a core clock speed of 1607 MHz and Gigabyte has increased this by 5% to 1695 MHz, allowing for a boost clock of 1835 MHz. The OC Mode takes things further, providing a 7% overclock with a base clock of 1721 MHz and a boost clock of 1860 MHz. Of course, using Gigabyte's Extreme Engine, we're going to try and push things even further. Finally, around the I.O. end of the graphics card, we find a dual-link DVI port, an HDMI 2.0B port, and three DisplayPort 1.4 ports. It is possible to drive a single 8K display using a pair of display ports, you know, just in case you have an 8K panel lying around. So while you pondered that, let's get back into the benchmarks. First up, we're taking a look at the results in Armour 3 at 1440p. Here you can see that gaming mode netted us basically the same performance as the Founders Edition. OC mode delivered a tiny amount of extra performance, and our maximum overclock barely pipped the Founders Edition overclock by a single frame. 4K told the same story. Here OC mode was able to grab a single extra frame, as did our custom overclock, which gave us 44 frames on average and the exact same performance as the Founders Edition card. The bigger numbers in Battlefield resulted in slightly bigger frame margins between the cards. Gaming mode was again identical to the Founders Edition card, OC mode gained 3 FPS, and our custom overclock was able to net 14 more FPS, giving the card a 2 FPS win over the overclocked reference card. The performance trend was the same at 4K, but this time OC mode only netted us one extra frame. Our custom overclock allowed the Gigabyte card to make 63 FPS for a single frame victory over the Founders Edition. Okay, so you guys are starting to get the idea. The Division tells us the exact same story, and I'm not going to bore the hell out of you by saying the same thing over and over. I'll show the 4K results next, followed by the performance in Doom, Just Cause 3, Far Cry Primal, and Star Wars Battlefront. You'll see in each game that the maximum overclock is as good as even with the Founders Edition overclock, and the difference between the stock clock Founders versus the G1 Gaming's gaming mode and OC mode is pretty much negligible. 
The custom overclock results are no doubt a bit disappointing as the G1 Gaming is really no faster than the Overclock Founders Edition card. Despite running at least 10 degrees cooler in all of our tests, the Gigabyte's G1 Gaming 1080 didn't allow for any more overclocking headroom. Pushing the G1 Gaming further caused artifacts and eventual crashing despite temperatures staying in check. Given what I've found with the G1 Gaming, I really question if those extreme VRM cards will be able to push the 1080 core much higher. Something else worth pointing out is the fact that although our G1 Gaming base clock is higher than what we were able to achieve with the Founders Edition graphics card, the resulting performance was much the same. This is due to the boost clock, which was throttled down below 2GHz after 10 minutes of gaming, despite temperatures never exceeding 74 degrees Celsius. The average operating frequency was 1949MHz, and this did cause the G1 Gaming's fan to spin up to an audible 2300RPM, and while it wasn't loud, it was comparable to the Founders Edition, operating at around 40-50% to 50 fan speed. Out of the box, the power consumption is a couple of watts higher than the standard 1080, so I focused on my custom overclock to give you guys an idea of the maximum draw you're going to see from this card. You can see on this graph that at most our average total system consumption was 292 watts, 26 watts higher than what we saw from the stock clock reference card. This isn't huge and really comes down to the fact that we weren't really able to overclock the card significantly. Okay, so admittedly that wasn't as impressive or as exciting as I'd hoped. That said, I'm not exactly sure what I was expecting, so let's try and put all of this into perspective. Compared to the Founders Edition 1080, the G1 Gaming runs cooler, quite a bit cooler, so that's a huge plus. The card does however dissipate heat directly into the case, so for the card to outperform the Founders Edition, you need to ensure you have a decent case cooling setup. The operating volume, while quiet, isn't significantly better than the Founders Edition in my opinion. If anything, I think NVIDIA were too focused on the operating volume of the Founders Edition. When set to auto, the fan barely spins up on my card at all. The Gigabyte Extreme Engine is a very nice utility, and I'd happily use this over popular alternatives such as MSI Afterburner. Out of the box, the G1 Gaming is faster than the Founders Edition, though the margins weren't exactly significant. Still, you are getting more performance at no extra cost. In fact, as it stands, the G1 Gaming 1080 is $50 cheaper in both the US and Australia when compared to the Founders Edition. At $650 US, the G1 Gaming isn't yet selling for the advertised $600 US MSRP, but with limited stock, it'll probably be a few weeks or even months before we see $600 GTX 1080s available. Overall, the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1080 G1 Gaming is a very nice graphics card that takes Nvidia's current flagship GPU and pairs it with a better performing cooler, while offering a little extra performance out of the box. It isn't worlds better than the Founders Edition like many of us had hoped, but this isn't Gigabyte's fault, and it seems like there simply isn't the headroom for those rumoured 2.2 to 2.4 GHz overclocks. Gigabyte does have a more extreme model capable of feeding the GPU even more power, so I'll definitely be keen to see if that model takes things to the next level. What do you guys think of the gaming G1? Let me know in the comments and hit subscribe if you haven't yet to get coverage of all the upcoming new gen graphics cards. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time.